So thank you, Andy, for inviting me. I'm impressed what uh, Paivosa has allowed you to, to do it. I'm still amazed how much you have achieved with it. So I'm really happy and proud to be here and knowing that uh, the technology that we are building, it's actually allowing people to do this amazing stuff. And uh, hopefully the whole idea here is also to tell you that you can achieve similar things with, with this technology. So <clears throat> I guess most of you know um, what it is citizen science. We started this uh, framework because we wanted to, to, to bring an open source alternative to what is outside. I um, mean, other, like, probably you know Mechanical Turk from Amazon or Cloudflower um, solutions. But the thing is we wanted to give people the power to actually run their own servers and do really uh, simple stuff with, with this technology. And um, we run, I belong also to the Citizen Cyber Science Center, which is a joint partnership between CERN, United Nations, and University of Geneva. And every 18th month, uh, we run a summit about citizen science. And actually, the last one was here in uh, specifically this building. And um, I, I run, um, basically went through all the participants and I asked them what is for them citizen science. And let me. Science is freedom. Inspiration. Stream side entomology. Participation. Creative. Participation. Empowerment. Community. Subversive. Collaboration. Impact. Mass. People. What is citizen science for you? New opportunities. So for me, the most interesting aspect of asking everyone is that no one actually repeated the same word. There was one rule, you only have to answer with one word, but no one actually came up with the same word. And that was amazing. It's a really alive thing that everyone has its own opinion. And I think that's actually bringing interesting things. Uh, so for example, they were the only ones, Andy and his team, they, they were the only ones doing humanities uh, at that moment. I think now there are many more people thanks to their, their early efforts. So basically, as you know, crowdsourcing or uh, citizen science is basically getting the collective intelligence of people in order to solve problems that algorithms are not good enough uh, and that actually with uh, enough people, as, as you have said, um, we, we can discover new things that algorithms do not see because you, you train an algorithm to see only what you want to do it. Just have this, this in mind. Always computers and algorithms are created by humans. So you train them to do exactly what you want to do. If there is something strange in that picture, in that um, data set, it's not going to be discovered because they, they are not flexible. They are not, yeah, that, that's basically. The other interesting thing is we started also uh, PyBosa because we wanted to, we know that the way uh, we are producing goods nowadays is changing. The production model is changing completely and we are not consumers anymore. We are also producers and through this day, you will be taking pictures, uploading it to Twitter, they will go with GPS coordinates, etc. So we are basically, um, it's much easier to create something than, than a few years ago. For example, one of the examples I use is now you can sort a sort movie, uh, film a sort movie with your iPhone, for example, or an, an Android phone, and upload it to YouTube or Vimeo and get many more money than even one of these movies from Hollywood. Why? Because you're connected with the people, it's cheaper, it's easier. The same with album music, etc. So we wanted to basically bring back that idea to science. If we are producing uh, those kind of things, uh, why not repeating the same? And more importantly, because usually the amateurs are usually more professionals than, than the professionals. And this is an example. I usually use this picture of this guy. Um, he probably has invested a lot of money in that camera, the tripod, etc. And it's just for the fun. It's not because he lives on this. So this is what it usually you, you find in, in, in this type of uh, events. So the other thing we, we also do is uh, one of the really cool things from PyBosa is that we try to integrate with as many platforms and, and solutions that are out there. So one of the things we, we do, we identify uh, in Citizen Science three layers. One is volunteer computing. I don't know how many people have heard about this project SETI at home. No one? So I, I love to explain this. Uh, so this one actually started because they were looking for extraterrestrials. And it's a research project, it's a real one. Um, they use the Arecibo um, um, uh, uh, sensor, I mean the, the big uh, antenna that they have at Arecibo. Probably you have seen the movie Contact, 
with Jodie Foster. So basically, that actually inspired that uh, specific project. So the problem was they didn't have enough money for analyzing the data that they are recording from the uh, uh, space. And uh, it was when the internet was blooming uh, in the 90s, and basically uh, the researchers said, okay, what if instead of buying a super computer, we, instead of having all the data, we chunk it, we uh, slice it, we send small slices to different people, they run the analysis for us, and they upload the results for us, so we can actually uh, get the results and, and do it. So in this case, basically, uh, it became really popular. Uh, they have been, uh, with volunteers, they have been always in the top 500 uh, computers in the world, thanks to the volunteers donating CPU resources. And uh, this is another approach of, of doing science. The only thing is a bit passive. You, you usually don't do anything. You just install the software and, and that's all. In, in words of the volunteers, they say, and I have been in this specific case, when the, there is nothing else to do, they only are happy creating flameworks in the forums. So. <laughs> The other one is uh, volunteer sensing, and let me show you. Bil volunteer sensing is basically inviting people, uh, something similar to what the MicroPass project is doing, to engage with getting data for your project. So this is, for example, with a group called Public Labs. They create open hardware. As you can see, it's very cheap. It's one um, bottle of, uh, of water of two liters, uh, cameras that you have at home, probably an old one, uh, rubber, and a big balloon. They put it helium inside. And actually, you can create um, maps and compete with Google. Uh, and for, for example, for archaeology, it should be really interesting for, for doing it. So let's, this is a workshop we run in, in Madrid. So this is in Media Lab Prague. We were on the street. We put the, So you just want to remember not to get anything over um, where the lens is going to open. Uh, how high can you find this <laughs> And that's the kind of picture that you can actually at the end see. So they have a software that actually allows you to paste all the images because you have the camera taking pictures. So it's called Map Niter. So basically it's like nighting uh, pictures. And the really cool thing is, uh, this actually was doing because in Spain, uh, in Madrid now there is a group actually studying about putting uh, beehives in the roofs of the buildings. So the problem is usually if you want to know how much space that you have uh, in square meters, uh, you cannot know it with just the pictures. But you can import this data to PyBosa and do the analysis and get that information automatically. So it's really easy and you become always the, the most popular person. As soon as you get the balloon, all the kids come to you. So it's really fun and, and people love it. A lot of people ask questions. Another example is um, an spectrometer. We use, for example, just paper and tape. That's all you need and a DVD-ROM. And, and you can actually uh, measure the, the light. So there is a short video where you can see um, one of the really cool things is that uh, thanks to citizen science we engage with uh, many more multidisciplinary groups of people. So actually that opens the door to many more things. And this group is actually uh, people who love origami. They are paper engineers and they were helping us to improve the So this is you build the DVD, um, then you cut it. This is one of the pieces that we use to create the spectrometer with a piece of DVD minus R. It has to be minus R, otherwise it doesn't work. And this is basically the, the version. You put it in your phone, it's just tape. You can put it in your webcam, whatever you, you can imagine. And then you actually only have to put it in front of light and you can see it's really amazing. You can, if you put it towards the sun, you get all the wavelength. If you put it to uh, one of these bulbs, they only emit in one. So it's really easy to, to use it. And this kind of uh, data can be actually, again, linked to, to what we do. So Paibosa actually started in, in Cape Town in South Africa. So uh, from the Citizen Cyber Science Center, we do workshops all over the world. One of our goals is to teach open source technologies that can be used by researchers uh, so they can actually get the benefit in involving and engaging with people. And obviously, one of our main reasons is usually, in, so for example, in Cape Town, at that moment, we only have 64 kilobytes of uh, bandwidth. So for people living in Europe, it's kind of difficult. And they made an special, I mean, they were an, uh, we were in the African Institute for Mathematics. And I remember quite vividly, they said, look, we, we have to talk to the council just to have this for you, this workshop. So it was just uh, a really 
it's, it's amazing how much they can do with so little. So the, the whole idea was setting up a um, volunteer computing project is just on a small computer, you connect it to the web, but the really high-end computers in Europe and uh, US, they can actually contribute to that project. So for them, the cost is really low. The same with uh, volunteer thinking or volunteer sensing. They can actually engage with people from all over the world and achieve uh, things that it will be impossible otherwise. So we have been in Brazil, uh, we have been in, in Asia, in, in different parts of the, of the world. And as part of the PyBoss uh, solution, we also host uh, a version of PyBoss. So you don't need to install your own PyBoss server, so you can actually build uh, your own projects in, in crowdcrafting. So let me show you what is crowdcrafting. We are moved by questions. <laughs> questions we don't know how to answer. And we like that, because a question is the beginning of an idea, the starting point of research that will lead to a piece of knowledge which will hopefully inspire more new, exciting questions. One mind can make a difference, but lots of minds working together can make the unknown known. Crowdcrafting. Moving science. So it's basically what you have seen before. Um, the thing is we have um, a lot of, one of the really cool things from PyBoss is we provide templates so no one has to start from scratch. And I'm going to show you what you can actually achieve with the platform without touching any single line of code. I mean it's for very basic solutions but it usually in most of the cases those are enough. So one of the usual cases is image pattern recognition, uh, where you have a bunch of images and you need to extract some information from it. The usual example, um, why do you need humans? Um, Facebook says that they recognize 98% of people's faces, but I always say that I know how to beat that algorithm. I only have to get in disguise, put a costume that actually modifies my face, and I don't look at it like a human anymore. And the algorithm will not identify that there is a human in there. But if I show you the picture, you will say yes, there is a person, no, no matter where, and in milliseconds. So that, that's the whole idea. So this is um, Crowdcrafting, which is a PyBoss server, the same one as Micropasts. And here you can actually see uh, how simple it is to create um, um, a project. So basically all, all you have to do is to type uh, a name, a short description for the URL, and um, then what, what is about your project? A description where you explain what we will be doing. In this case, uh, as I told you, PyBoss is integrated with third-party tools, so we are going to use our importer from Flickr. So if you have already your pictures in Flickr, you will see how you can actually get your albums just by clicking. It's as simple as that. So <clears throat> once you create the project, you can actually uh, specify um, upload an avatar for um, getting a nice picture of the project. And once you have it, um, <coughs> you can import the data. So the, the data basically, um, you use the Flickr importer. We have several options there. But the Flickr importer, you all have an option uh, of logging with Flickr. As you can see, we only access your Flickr account. We only need read permissions. We don't modify anything. So these are my albums of pictures that I have already in Flickr. And you only have to select one of them. You click on them, and automatically it's imported to, to your Crowdcrafting project. Sound pattern recognition, the same, but for uh, audio. Uh, here, So this exactly started because, uh, as I told, we work with United Nations, and they are really interested when there is a war or something similar. Um, they, they, you know that there are in the news a lot of videos, people uploading it to YouTube now with ISIS, all these problems. So they actually analyze those videos and they hear the, the languages that are sp uh, speak, uh, spoken. Uh, what differences are, what types of sounds, etc. So that kind of information gives them uh, ways to prove if the video is a fake or not. Um, so one of the ideas is exactly the same. Uh, let's move a bit further. So in this case, um, we will be using a Dropbox importer. So um, you only have to have a Dropbox uh, thing. Imagine you have your bunch of images or uh, PDF files or sound clips. You blow them to Flickr, I'm um, sorry, to Dropbox. And you use the Dropbox importer. So basically, you get the choose from Dropbox. Um, you go through your own folders. You choose the ones that you want to analyze. You select them. You click import. 
And then uh, you add a task editor that I didn't show before. So basically, uh, you have the template already as we are doing uh, some pattern recognition. We use the sound pattern recognition template. We click in start contributing and automatically it will load the, the sound clip and you can actually answer one question or not. So basically, all you have to do is modify HTML for uh, putting the answers that you want and the question that you want to ask. So is this sound produced by a human? Or is this in English? Or is this in Italian? Any, any of those. Um, so we created this project specifically for UN and also for a research group um, from UK, if I'm not mistaken. So they were recording the, the uh, some birds. And they are really interested because the birds from the north, uh, I don't remember, the Hammerhead, I think, is the, 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 the Hammerheads from the north, they sing in a different way. And when they mate with the south ones, uh, they actually change the way they sing. So it's really interesting, and you can have like humans. Basically, when you go to the south, at least in Spain, you have a different accent, etc. They have different accents, so you can follow that. And they need humans to actually distinguish between uh, the, uh, the different accents. Um, we do also PDF data mining, which is similar to the transcription. So you can use images or you can use PDF files. Uh, the really interesting thing of uh, PDFs is that, for example, with this open oil project, um, they had the PDF contracts from oil companies. And uh, you have to go through the first five pages of those contracts and extract information about who are contracting, who is the company, etc. Um, let me show you how it works. It's, it's really similar to Let's skip to, okay. So basically, you use again the Dropbox importer. Uh, the Dropbox one allows you to import, as I said before, PDF, images, videos, and sound. So you get a few PDF files. And the really cool thing of this template is that you, the, temp, the PDFs are completely rendered by the browser. You only need a modern browser, Firefox or uh, Chrome, and automatically, um, you will get the PDF render. You don't need an extra plugin. It works in tablets, it works in phones. Uh, that's one of the really beauties of, of this type of project. So basically, you have to wait. It depends on how big is the PDF, but this, you can see the PDF. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can actually go through different pages, and then you can transcribe whatever you want. So this is really handy, because most of the transcriptions I know, uh, most of the people basically get the images in high quality, and they produce PDFs. So you only have to load it to your Dropbox account, and you can start. Uh, your own project. As you saw from Micropass, there were many more questions like the georeferencing, etc. We also provide those uh, templates, but they are in different ones, so you have to use a mix. And then the video pattern recognition is pretty similar. So basically, you choose the, the video files, you import them, and then what you will get is the, I mean, you use again the, the task editor for the um, the video pattern recognition, you click in use, and as you will see, as soon as you click in start, you get the video, it's in HTML5, so it's really useful. Again, you only need the, you don't need any strange, uh, uh, strange plugin or anything like that. It will be working in your own tablet, uh, desktop, etc. You only need a, a really modern uh, browser, that's all you need. So basically, um, this is really interesting for describing actions. We have been hearing people like moving cells, uh, studying how crystals react to laser light, et cetera. So there are, there are many options where you need humans to actually track and explain what is happening in the video. So this is, for example, for UN. And uh, one of the things they want to do is actually invite people who are experts on uh, weapons to describe the weapons that they are putting on those, on those videos, because that actually tells you if the, the video is a fake or not also. So let me show you now a few examples of what uh, people are doing in crowd crafting so you can have uh, an idea of what is possible. What, what do you think is this? I mean, this is a difficult one. Uh, I don't think many of you, because how many work with computers? Few. So this is one of the very first um, uh, memories created for computers. And um, what we are trying to, so my main goal is there is this group in London, uh, London Nano Center, who is actually trying to improve how we store information in memories, and they are looking at it from the point of view of uh, using nanoparticles for storing ones and zeros in our hard drives. So 
In this project, what you are looking at is basically a picture they take with the microscope, and you have to identify, as you can see, there is a white box. That's the nanoparticle, and they react with the surface. So all you have to do is to actually, they have like um, some axis. So basically, you have to mark the center and put the ax uh, along the, the lines of the of those petals, I don't know how to call it, the, 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 the glowing thing. So basically that will give you the, the orientation of the molecule and that will be used for actually knowing how you can actually encode a one or a zero. So the, this group actually, um, uh, it was really interesting because uh, they were throwing away data. They are in a small research group, only three people, and uh, the microscope produce much more data than they can handle. So we said, hey, stop throwing data away. Just invite the rest of the world to participate with you. And they're in the second round of analyzing data. Then we have biology uh, projects. Uh, people are studying how two different arthropod species are interacting. Again, here you need an expert. There is no way an algorithm could actually tell you if there are two different arthropods interacting. Um, there were another project about studying the uh, fins of, of the whales, because it's like the DNA of, of our fingerprints. Um, this is a protein, um, um, this is a, a group uh, studying biomaterials. So they create their own proteins and they need to ask people to mark them. They, they know, they create them, but they don't know where they are created. So they have to actually go through those images and they need someone else helping them. And what I have shown you up to now is most of these projects come from uh, research uh, communities, okay? people who actually live on this. But we think really that uh, by enabling people and giving people tools, they will create really nice projects. So I'm going to finish my talk with two projects actually created by citizens, not by professionals. So um, does anyone know what could be this picture showing? It's a difficult one. Not everyone has seen one of those. So this is a fracking station. Um, uh, in Europe, it's not as problematic as in US. In US, there has been a lot of uh, people complaining and, and working on it. So basically, they decided to say, instead of, OK, we think fracking is a bad thing, we want to actually bake it, back it up with some data. We want to say, OK, this is bad because we have this data that actually proves it. So they decided to analyze uh, the Pennsylvania state, because the Pennsylvania state had uh, recent uh, fracking uh, companies working there. They have images for 2000, from 2005, 8, and 10. Uh, the, the Ministry of uh, Environmental Agency in US basically flies with uh, um, with planes, and they get really high resolution images, so it's easy to see if there is a fracking thing. And all the contracts uh, are available publicly, so you can know the latitude and longitude where those uh, fracking <coughs> paths are, are there. So basically, the, they wanted to know something really sim simple. Okay, if there is a fracking thing there, is there is no path visible. I mean, they have the license, but nothing has started. There is a bare path. They already started cutting the trees and preparing the ground for actually getting the machinery. Or you can actually see the path with the equipment. So actually, there is some extraction. They're working on, on getting the, the, the gas. Or you don't know. Sometimes it's difficult to, to know if, if it is or not. One of the really interesting things with satellite images is that water looks brown. Uh, from, from space, so it's sometimes difficult to distinguish between earth, soil, and, and, and water. So thanks to that, uh, they did in less than a month, with only 200 people, uh, 90,000 classifications, which is a lot. And the, the most important thing for me is the discovery. So in 2005, they found 60 paths. In 2008, 410 new ones. So you have to sum up the previous ones. But in 2010, you can see that this is growing really, really quickly. And um, as they are not professionals, they didn't, wrote, uh, they didn't write an article on a journal. They basically wrote a blog post in their own website. And I read it because I was following the process, but nothing, not, not so much noise. They were happy. They were just for them. And 15 days later, I read in the newspaper in Spain that the bubble of the fracking in US was, has exploded. So they were the really first ones actually seeing this. And as they are not professionals, they didn't uh, get the attention that they, sh they deserve. And the most important thing is, through all this process, all this data is available. So you have the raw data, the processed data, the scripts they run, etc. Everything is open source. And this is not the usual case in, in science. Getting access to everything um, is, is not the, the usual case. So they even created a, a nice map. So you, you can see the, the paths in 2005, 2008, and 2010. As you can see, there is nothing 
much left. Um, this is, um, well, what is this, or what do you think is this? <clears throat> this is a journal from the 80s. So this is a journal, and um, this is basically a way of uh, showing you how a citizen got really angry and upset with a journalist in Iceland. So there was an article, imagine you're on Sunday, you're reading your newspaper with your coffee, and there is an article that says the judge of your uh, district, everything that goes through his hands, you get convicted. Like 98% of his cases, you are convicted no matter what. So um, the, the whole article, created a lot of noise and a lot of people were uh, upset like, look, maybe you're right, but you need to compare it with someone else. We need to compare it with another judge to see if he is completely an outlier or not. And the journalist said, look, the data is really interesting and I don't have time. So he was like that. And this guy got really upset and decided to prove him that he was wrong. So what he did was create a script to download all the trials from the Ministry of Justice from Iceland. He uploaded everything to crowdcrafting. He invited the same people that were complaining in the newspaper to come to this uh, uh, project. Um, they analyzed in three days all the, all the trials, uh, three persons. This is translated to, from Icelandic. I don't know how many people speak Icelandic here, but I'm not one of those. And actually, the really interesting thing is, again, 200. That, that number starts to, to become the, the usual number that actually you only need a few hundred people to do it. And in three days it was done, and actually for him it took only one, 10 hours of work to do all the job. Downloading the, the trials, uploading to, to crowdcrafting, analyzing them, and publishing the results. So actually the judge was not as bad as they, they were thinking. So in Reykjavik, the, the average uh, conviction rate is 95. He was 98. That's a little deviation, but nothing really, really bad. But as he analyzed the full country, the really cool thing is new questions are arisen. So why, for example, is dropping to 89%? Or why it increases to 96 So he started to ask questions like this could be for economics. So the, the really cool thing for me is this citizen was actually doing much better journalism than the journalist. <coughs> that uh, he was being paid. And even he created, as he analyzed the full country, he has a list of the top 50 worst judges with uh, conviction rates. You can analyze it by sex, you can analyze it by age, you can do many more research than, than, the, than the journalist. So again, um, this is the PyBoss technology that is available for anyone. And um, I wanted just to close up saying that this is, has been developed for scientists, uh, citizens, amateurs, and volunteers, because we invite everyone to, to create projects and, and use the technology for it. And for the geeky part, um, it's built on Python, but actually you don't need to know it. Uh, we provide those, those tools. What you need to know is a bit of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, with that, you are done. Uh, it's 100% open source and 100% open science. So all the data that the projects are generated are open and anyone can actually download it with a click. And in other words, we are developing this for you with love. Uh, and what we mean by this is we want to talk to you. If you have a project uh, that needs a crowd for solving the problem, just talk to us. We'll be happy to help. And that's all. <laughs>